Welcome, Heat Seekers. It's your boy, Roto Heat Rick. Today, I'm here to talk about my redraft running back tier rankings. Let's get right to it. With tier one, I have one running back in there. And the reason why is we have zero questions about the talent, the opportunity, or injuries with Jonathan Taylor. The guy is a beast. We don't have to say a whole lot about it. We know that Indianapolis is going to use him a lot. He's going to catch some balls out of the backfield, and he's going to be one of the leading rushers in the NFL, barring injury. Going into the season, we literally have nothing to worry about. The offense should be better with Matt Ryan, and the touchdown upside should be there. Jonathan Taylor's a smash number one for me when it comes to the running backs. Heading on to tier two, these players, I have no doubt about the talent talent, but we may have some injury concerns and or full workload concerns. CMC at the top of this list is a monster, but we've seen over the past two seasons that he's had trouble staying on the field. Now they're talking about him changing up the way that he plays, and we don't know how that's going to affect him when it comes to fantasy. He's going to be a great NFL running back, but the only reason why he's not in tier one is because we just don't know if he can stay on the field or if this change in gameplay, not taking as many hits, is going to cost him some of that big playability that he's had in the past. This is a similar issue that we see with Derrick Henry on the opposite side of this tier. The problem with Henry is that he doesn't catch very many passes. Last year, though, he was getting 29 touches per game, but his efficiency had dropped the past three seasons. Obviously, if he stays on the field and gets that kind of workload, he's a tier one guy. But going into the season, I can't spend that type of draft capital on him knowing that the injuries and the efficiency may drop and the touches may drop by quite a bit. It makes me a little bit worried. In between CMC and Derrick Henry, we have a lot of guys that either have some injury concerns, new offenses, or just don't catch as many passes as we would like. Saquon and Dalvin Cook are guys that can do both. They get a lot of rushes, they get a lot of pass attempts, but they just have some issues staying on the field. Both of them could be the RB1, but those are the concerns that we have with them. When it comes to the rest of the running backs in here, they just either don't get all of the rushing work or all of the passing work that we would like to see from running backs in tier one. The guys in tier three have talent for sure, but it may not be the top end talent. They may also have injury concerns or they are splitting the backfield. For Javante Williams, it just depends on how much work he can take from Melvin Gordon. We saw last year that Javante Williams towards the end of the year was really popping off, has all the talent in the world. We just don't know what that usage is going to look like. Though with Russell Wilson coming to town, the touchdown upside should be higher than it was in 2021. DeAndre Swift loses a lot of carries to Jamal Williams, who is more efficient or was last year than DeAndre Swift. He's going to catch a lot of balls, though, which gives him huge upside in PPR leagues and will still get a lot of touches, even though he splits the carries with Jamal Williams. Guys like Nick Chubb and Elijah Mitchell, their issue is that they don't catch a lot of passes. They're going to get a lot of rushing attempts, and they are the number one in their backfield. But with PPR, we would love to see more receptions from these guys. Same thing could be said for J.K. Dobbins, who's a little bit lower on the list because he's also coming back from that season-ending injury that he had last year. And we don't know how long it'll take him to get up to speed. Cam Akers is kind of in that same boat. He got a lot of work in the playoffs last year after returning, but we just don't know if he's full 100%. Plus, he wasn't very efficient when he got back last year. So we're hoping to see him fully healthy and be way more efficient than he was in his return last year. If so, this guy is a talent that I believe could be a tier two talent for running backs in 2022. Leonard Fournette, Ezekiel Elliott, and James Conner all have age on their negatives, right? They've been around for a long time. They've had a lot of touches in the NFL. We don't know how that's going to work for efficiency. James Conner was very touchdown dependent last year, was not very efficient, but did get a lot of touches. That should stay relatively the same, but we know that touchdowns are very fluky. They're not sticky from season to season. Ezekiel Elliott making a lot of money this year should get a ton of touches, but how many of those will be receptions with Tony Pollard being rumored to be more 
more heavily involved in the passing game. When it comes to Leonard Fournette, sometimes we just don't know what we're going to get. Right now, the assumption is he's going to get a lot of work out of the backfield as a pass catcher like he did last year. But will Rasheed White eat into his carries and hurt his touchdown upside from a carry perspective? That's something that is somewhat of a worry that we have to pay attention to going into the 2022 season. Tier four is kind of the, I don't know, it's up in the air for a lot of these running backs. A lot of them have good talent, not elite talent, but they may be splitting with other guys or they don't get a lot of receiving work. The question is, will they get more of that in 2022? For example, David Montgomery at the top, he has been a guy that gets a lot of touches at the top of the league in touches at the running back position, but there are rumors that Khalil Herbert is going to get more action this season, so Montgomery falls a little bit even though he's been a touch monster in the past. Miles Sanders, a lot of touches in the second half of the season last year when healthy, but zero touchdowns last year. This is actually a guy that I believe could be top 15. We just don't know what the Eagles are going to do with the running game. Early in the season last year, they did not like to run the ball. Then they completely switched and ended up leading the NFL in rushing attempts over the second half of the season. If he can get into the end zone, his value could jump big time. And he's a guy that I love taking shots on in this tier. ETN and Brees Hall are both guys that we haven't seen in the NFL. We don't know exactly what the usage is going to be. We know that James Robinson is coming back earlier than people expected. And Doug Peterson has never given one running back all of the touches in the backfield. He's probably going to be heavily utilized in the pass game, which could be huge for PPR leagues, but we just don't know. The talent is up there. He should be a tier three guy. Once we figure out how he's being used, we'll be able to better evaluate his professional upside for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brees Hall, on the other hand, is rumored to be the second running back right now with Michael Carter. Now, I don't think that's going to last very long if that's how the season starts. Brees Hall is the more talented back in this backfield, but we've also got Joe Flacco at the helm to start the season. We don't really know what this Jets offense is going to look like without Zach Wilson or even with Zach Wilson under center. So Brees Hall is kind of a question mark, but but he should take over this backfield and at least over the second half of the season be the commanding leader in that backfield for touches. And he should be catching some passes out of the backfield as well. A.J. Dillon is a running back that should be a little bit higher, but we don't know the exact usage of him and Aaron Jones. We know Aaron Jones is probably going to catch the most passes, and we know that targets for a running back are more valuable than a carry. A.J. Dillon should be the red zone back, though, and he should be able to finish in the top 24 to 30 range at running back. Josh Jacobs, another guy that is rumored to be heading into a season where he's more heavily utilized in the passing game with Josh McDaniels at the helm there in Las Vegas now. He did see an uptick in targets last season, but that didn't correlate to a huge fantasy season. He's good, has top 12 potential if he is used in that way, but will Zamir White eat into his work? We don't know yet. Obviously, Kenyon Drake was released, paves a path to more receptions for Jacobs in an offense that should have a lot more touchdown upside. For CEH, it's just, can he get better in short yardage? Isaiah Pacheco is on his heels. I don't know if I said that right, but he's a big question mark. But in a Chiefs offense, I love taking shots on him back here in this range. He's a lot more appealing in the seventh, eighth round of drafts than he was when he was a second rounder, a first rounder as a rookie. There's a lot of upside here in this offense because there's a lot of touchdown upside. But can he fend off the other running backs in the backfield, catch more passes like we expected when he came out? There's a big polarizing community around CEH, and that's why he falls into this tier four. Kareem Hunt, it's just usage, right? He's not going to get a lot of the carries. He's going to get a decent amount, but he should be used in the passing game. We know that him and Nick Chubb can both be successful at the same time. It's just hard to invest a lot into him, not knowing how the Browns offense is going to be without Watson for the first 11 weeks. But Hunt is a good player to have here in Tier 4. For the guys in Tier 5, these are just either upside shots or guys that we have a lot of questions about. Rashad Penny, can he stay on the field? We saw in the last third of the season last year that he just dominated. He was one of the best rushers in the NFL, one of the best fantasy running backs in the NFL over the last six weeks. 
The problem is, can he stay healthy and can he keep Kenneth Walker from taking a bunch of the touches? Now, Kenneth Walker is also in this tier because Rashad Penny can't stay on the field. And if he's out, Walker should get a lot of work. For the rest of the guys, Devin Singletary is battling with two running backs for rushing and pass catching duties out of the Bills backfield. Obviously a good offense with a lot of touchdown upside and he played very well down the stretch last year as well. Can he keep that momentum going into 2022 and be one of the top 10 backs like he was down the stretch last year? It's a huge question mark. I think he's the most talented back in this backfield, but the Bills showed they wanted a pass catcher in that backfield when they tried to get J.D. McKissick and then ended up drafting James Cook. So a lot of question marks. That's why Singletary is down here in this spot. Melvin Gordon, age, Javante Williams in the backfield. Going to be a good running back three, I think, but the upside is capped because of Javante Williams. Chase Edmonds, Dolphins brought in a bunch. He did get paid the most and was the first signing. So it looks like he's going to get a lot of opportunity, especially catching passes out of the backfield. Probably not the red zone threat. It's just a big question mark in that offense. And they added Tyreek Hill. So how is that all going to work? How many of the running backs are they going to use? We know this is the San Francisco system that uses multiple running backs and gets highly efficient returns on every running back that is in that offense. Can that translate to Miami and how many of them are going to get a lot of work? That's the reason why Edmonds is down here. Could probably be a tier four guy if we knew that he was going to get the majority of the rushing work. Not 20 carries a game, but if we were confident he was going to get in the 14-15 range, I think there's a chance it's only in the 10 range though. And he shares that duty while being the main pass catcher. Corderell Patterson going to get a lot of work, but but we saw the touchdown frequency that he had in the first half of the season just completely dissipate in the second half. So how can he hold up? Will he hold off Tyler Algier, another rookie running back that could make his way into this range? It's just a huge question mark about a wide receiver turned running back that's only played it for one year. Ramondre Stevenson, I think he's going to take over the job in New England. You don't even see Damian Harris on here because Harris – Hasn't caught a lot of passes. There are rumors that he's catching more in practice. And we know that pass catching role is up for grabs. But I think that's going to be Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's just a more efficient runner, a more efficient pass catcher, and is the more talented all around back in this backfield. And I honestly want nothing to do with Damian Harris going into the 2022 season. Damian Pierce seems like he's winning the job for Houston. I'm just a little concerned that there's not a lot of upside with this offense because if we knew he was 70-30 type running back and could be efficient in this offense, I would have him higher just because Marlon Max, the other guy that he's competing with, who I do think is talented, but we haven't seen much from the last two years. If their offense improves, which was honestly more improved last year than I thought it was going to be with Davis Mills at the helm, and we have more touchdown upside from Damian Pierce, if he's catching balls out of the backfield, this could be a very good undervalued pick preseason. His value could just keep going up as the season progresses. Tony Pollard, I don't think he's going to get a lot of rushing attempts like a lot of people do. Ezekiel Elliott is just making too much money. And this is a guy that played injured last year and still finished as a top 12 running back. Tony Pollard is going to be used in the passing game, but how much is that going to be? We know Gallup staying off the pup, so he's going to be back probably in the first few weeks. CD Lamb, they've got a lot of options in that passing game. Dalton Schultz, how much is Tony Pollard going to get if he gets 80 targets, he's probably going to move up this list and be higher in these tiers. But right now, I just think there's a lot of question marks about his usage. That's it for the running back preseason tier video. I'm going to be doing these for weekly in season. So if you want, go ahead and bookmark the playlist and make sure you turn on notifications after you subscribe so that you don't miss any of those positional tier videos each week.